let's talk, we're starting to talk the, the establishment of TNB and how you build it and how you relate it to a community. TNB has had its problems in the last 15 years and in fact almost went out of existence and now is in a shell. So the rise and fall of theaters. We could talk about Vancouver Playhouse. Um, what is it that happened, do you think, and what do you as someone who worked on the councils and was an artistic director, in terms of when a theater starts to come apart and decay and either shrink, what aren't the board and the artistic staff doing on that way down that allows that theater to go? Let's talk about theater New Brunswick in particular. I think that, that uh, I think over a period of time, uh, I think in a, in a way it was cursed by its own success. You know, uh, I, had, I had a great time there. Malcolm Black came in. Malcolm absolutely committed to that tour and loved the tour. And in fact, you say, gotta love getting out of Fredericton. And uh, he was very, very good. Then Janet Amos came in and Janet was doing a great job. At first she thought it was Blythe East, but it wasn't. She discovered that and started to do really good work. Then there was <laughs> a very short period with Sharon Pollock. Yeah, that lasted a year, <laughs> and on it went. And uh, then Michael came in, and Michael uh, had a pretty good run in it. But I think that, I mentioned on my original board, a man named Jack Main, who was head of the Beaver Brook Foundation in Canada, vice president of the Montreal Trust. He was amazed after our first touring season and then supported us really well. And in the second touring season, we had established these advisory, uh, you know, friends of TMB. And he said to me at the end of the thing, he says, how are you saying thank you to these people? And I said, well, you say thank you. He says, no, 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 you have to, you have to do something. He said, invite a representative from each of them to come into Fredericton for the opening night of the last play of the season take them to dinner at the hotel, and thank them. Okay, it's gonna cost money. There'll be money. We did that every year, every year. Somebody came in and did the thing. I mean, the big thing, in 1970, 71, when we did the renovation, had to close the playhouse, Campbellton came after us to tour to Campbellton. We had not gone that far north before. And when I said, well, I don't know if we're going to be able to do anything because the building's going to be closed in Fredericton for a year and whether we're producing or not, I said, well, why not come here? We have a theater. We have uh, the shops at the school and all the rest of that. Why don't you come here? So we did. We went to Camelton and produced our winter season three shows out of there. Donald Davis was in a country girl with Chuck Shabbat. I mean, it was just amazing the commitment that these people had. Well, I think along the way people lost sight of how important that local involvement was. At board level they lost sight? At and artistic that, management and level that, lost? Yes. They lost that, sight of that? Yeah, I think, I think they did. I think they did. And so over a period of time it eroded. And also you have to continually backfill. I mean, you get people on your board you know, who are active in their 40s and that, you know, the kids are starting to grow up, they've got some time, but you gotta keep backfilling new people on the board, you know, you set terms, uh, you don't let people stay there forever, so that you're getting, who are the new people in the block? You know, who are the new 35 or 40 year olds who are out there doing things? And I think that, that we missed that step. Right. And I think over a period of time, that's really what happened. I think so. So was it a financial erosion? Did the touring through the to, through uh, New Brunswick, did that become a financial liability or? It started to as that local involvement and as TNB was doing everything from Fredericton. Right. Uh, you start to lose audiences, losing income. Oh yeah, that became a thing. And one of the big hits too was uh, you know, it's a whole other thing, but both the Canadian Beaver Book Foundation and the British Foundation became involved in a very expensive, and still going on to some extent, litigation with the Beaver Book Art Gallery over the ownership of the paintings. And uh, they uh, got very short of cash. And when I went back, I was told that 
that the deficit was about $150,000. But when I got back, I found out it was a little more than that. And uh, within a month of being there, the People Book Foundation announced that they were cutting our grant, which was $200,000, right off the top. Well, I managed to postpone that for a year, I think it was, and trying to find alternate funding. But uh, that became tight then. So, but you've got to serve the community. Because, I mean, I look at TNB in terms of New Brunswick, and New Brunswick is not a large province. It is not a well-to-do mm -hmm. well province, no. and yet it created a theater model that was in a city, but also was responsible to its regions, its towns. And, mm -hmm. and did that model also come up about because it was New Brunswick, and that's the only way you could make it work in New Brunswick. Whereas in Ontario, you know, a massive province with 13 million people, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Those models aren't quite as... Yeah. You see, uh, initially my model, uh, <laughs> if the Newfoundland experience had worked out, I would have been touring Newfoundland the same way. That, that was the idea, that we'd start at the Arts and Cultural Centre, and then we'd head across the island to our various places and then eventually when all the other arts and culture centers open that'd be great well i had the great pleasure years later of touring newfoundland with frankenstein <laughs> which i wrote with alden nolan and touring newfoundland with the incredible murder of cardinal tosca and also touring ontario with that show you know and we toured nova scotia pei almost from the beginning uh, so the model could have worked in that environment right. down there but New Brunswick became the logical one for me because there was a circular tour. Right. It was a really, you didn't have to double back too much in New Brunswick. Because I've always looked at MTC's tours to northern Manitoba yeah. as an essential part of mm -hmm. being a Manitoba theater centered in Winnipeg, yep. but responsible to the yep. province, so to speak. Yep. And the Playhouse uh, at one point became right. the Playhouse Theater Center of BC and right. did some touring. You know. So, uh, yeah. What happened at the Playhouse, do you know? I really don't. I really don't. Uh, well, I know in part, I know in part that at its peak, uh, when I left there in 87, yeah, 87 with the Sherlock Town, uh, subscriptions had hit just over 10,000. When Max got there, I think they were down to four. Now that's a hell of an amount of revenue to make up. Is that, is that drop in subscription, do you think that is a function of the programming of the plays? Is it the function of the outreach of the theater? Is it a function of decreased funding from arts bodies? Why do you think that may have come down? Well, I think Vancouver, of course, has, has many other companies and some very exciting companies. And let me tell you, Bill Miller knew how to run an organization. He's got his three companies going there. God bless him, longest running in Canada. Uh, I, think, I think the Playhouse uh, redefining this mandate at a particular point in time with, I think, Glennis right. uh, to do only plays of a certain period. I think that tied their hands. I think that tied their hands a lot. I think it was really difficult to come back from that. I think Max tried his might, could not come back from that. And also not, and it was, it was a bane of my existence there too, uh, but we managed to survive it, uh, was not having control of that space. The city owned the space, the city controlled the space. You know, <coughs> silly little uh, expenditures like having to strike the sets on Wednesday so the concert series could go on. It's always an expense, yep. you know. But it managed to survive for over 40 years with that. Right. You know. 